Okay, welcome to the business end of the PT6A, 675 shaft horsepower turboprop engine that's in the Cessna Caravan 208. The 208B, 208, uh, I believe, is the one that has a slightly more horsepower, but it's a much bigger, a much bigger airframe. This plane, as you can see, is called the Short Caravan, and it has a pod, which is I guess somewhat unusual based on what I'm hearing, but I think it's pretty cool. When you open up the cowling, you have three latches on the outside, one of, one of which can lock here. And you have a couple of different ways to you have a couple of different ways to prop up the cowling. If you're going to keep the door open, they give you this handy little stick here because the chain that you use to lock the door interferes uh, with the overall operation. And then you have this stick right here that you can uh, prop open the cowling with. The very first thing that you see, which is noticeable, is the inertial separator. In, in the cabin, in the next video, we'll, we'll have uh, me demonstrating this and starting up the engine. When you open the inertial separator, this will be an alternate air intake into the engine. And that's useful when you're in wet conditions or other conditions that might create a turbine flame out. Uh, you would activate the inertial separa separator like an icing uh, to keep the engine running smoothly. The only challenge with the inertial separator is that once you use it, it has to be inspected. Uh, you can't close it to make sure that there's nothing in there and that could cause all kinds of problems. So let's take a closer look at the left side of the engine. We have an air conditioner. We have a belt driven alternator right here. We have in this engine a high capacity uh, starter which is an upgrade over there, and then you can see the turbine inside. Behind me on my left, you can also see that we have a, a breaker panel for certain parts of the engine and our brake fluid reservoir. The big deals on this side and some of the controversy associated with this plane that I, that I dealt with recently has to do with the fuel filter and the oil can. can see from this picture those are those two items that are in there both of which need to be fully drained after a flight I think that's the best approach so what I've done is uh, a post flight checklist where we just sump both both of those and this is what the sump system uh, looks like it's pretty easy and actually the sump tube that comes with the plane has a Phillips head in it. So if you need to activate a sump and leave it on to fully drain, you already have a Phillips head that's inside the sump. So this is the left side of the engine. Let's go over to the right. All right, on the right side of the engine, we have a couple of noteworthy items. We won't go into all the little details, but the first noticeable item are, is the igniter. And there are two igniters that are right up on the turbine itself, and that ignites the fuel inside the turbine. And I think uh, there might be some misunderstanding about a turboprop. Um, this is essentially a jet engine it's just backwards. So instead of a traditional fan where you have air flowing through from the front and driving a fan, here you have air coming in from the back and driving a shaft that drives the prop, thereby requiring essentially the type rating uh, that you have to get through flight safety or one of the other competing agencies to be able to legally fly the plane, which is a pretty involved process and I'll have a video on that as well. So behind me, what we have here is the most noticeable item is the battery. Pretty expensive, not like a truck or a car battery. 
and these are the leads that go onto the battery. The reason that it's off is because the plane has a hot bus, and that's similar to getting into your car and turning on the lights. They work even if the battery, even if the key is not in the ignition. So this plane has the same thing. Uh, if someone leaves uh, an item on the hot bus accidentally on, it will drain the battery, uh, and then it's finished. So um, in post-flight, one of the post-flight check items that I've added is to uh, essentially disconnect the battery, which they make it really easy. It's designed for that. Outside of um, all the other little intricacies associated with this engine, you have one noticeable item, which is the exhaust. And you can see the exhaust going down here. The exhaust, while it might look like it's almost incidental, it's actually pretty involved and has taken years and years of research for these guys to figure out what kind of exhaust is going to work best for this particular installation of the PT-6 engine. And this is what it looks like all around the plane.